Projects in Dad's Garage asks, I uh, just turned 39 and I feel stuck in my life and job. I was a goldsmith for 12 years and I loved it, but it didn't pay well enough. So now I work a job I hate. Have you ever felt stuck and what did you do? Yes, yes, I, Bicentennial Man is an exact description of how I felt stuck in a job and what I did with being that stuck. I, look, I have, I have a lot of friends who do what they love. And I also have a lot of friends with bullshit jobs that they don't care about. And both of those realities, are, I mean, yeah, I have friends who like work for some large company doing copywriting and they just don't give a shit about it and they never talk about it. It is literally the thing they do to put food on the table and nothing else. And I, I respect that. And I, I totally understand that. There's, there's, you know, everyone allocates out the resources in their life with the tools that they have at their disposal. Um, but you're asking for advice. You don't like your current job. And money is an issue because what you used to do and clearly what you're very good at, if you were a goldsmith for 12 years, you reach some level of facility with that. And even at that level, it doesn't pay well enough. Well, the cost of gold. Um, I, I am a lifelong freelancer and uh, I have had almost never had a corporate desk job. I have a couple of times for brief periods of time, but for the most part, it has always been job by job by job by job. What's next? What's next? What's next? That is the mental frame of the freelancer. A freelancer like me gets a job that lasts for 14 years like Mythbusters, and there's not a second of a day that goes by in which I'm not thinking, I wonder what's gonna happen on the other end of this. And as a freelancer, whenever I was out of work, I treated being out of work like a job in which my job was to find work. So I would go through all the emails with old clients and they'd write to them, how are things going? What's going on? Just saying howdy. Uh, I would think about other industries that could use my skills. At one point, I had a long email chain with a company that built magic illusions in Las Vegas. I was thinking my skill set would be excellent for producing magic illusions in Las Vegas. And they agreed. Uh, unfortunately, for that job, I would have had to relocate to Las Vegas and I couldn't. But if you are at a job you don't like, but you have been a goldsmith for 12 years, being a goldsmith is a compendium of a bunch of different skills. And I would perhaps ask yourself if there are other industries zones of commerce that might utilize those skills uh, either as a side gig that augments your current job and gives you satisfaction or as a place to matriculate into a new career. Um, I, I look, I, I, I make this joke, but it's absolutely true. I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. I don't plan to. Um, I am very happy with the peripatetic method that I have had for finding work and uh, supporting the people around me. Um, and it's born, it has been born out of decades of thinking what's next and thinking how do I want what's next to arrive and what would be the parameters. I, I also, I'm a big believer in, in reiteration to yourself. Look, there's a reason people pray and it's because prayer actually works. Just sitting and concentrating for a period of time on, on every day on something that's important to you is a massive spiritual practice. It, it, no matter what religion you're doing it under, it is something that gives you a lot. And sitting there and thinking each day about how you want work to be is a fantastic spiritual practice. How do you want commerce and work to intersect with your life in a way that's fulfilling? <laughs> all right, James the Cyclist asks, I have all of my tools at home and my garage is five blocks away. I need good tool transpo. Suggestions, he doesn't say transpo, he says transportation. In film, it's transpo. Uh, suggestions on a type of tool bag, backpack, pockets, no pockets. I don't think I have an, 
no, my EDC4. So we recently, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you to buy my EDC4. Uh, it is a bucket bag, it is strong, it is strong as the day is long, and it is exactly what I use to transport tools back and forth between my house and my shop, which are only a few blocks distant. But as you can imagine, as you know, tools need to move back and forth all the time. Um, the EDC4 is reasonably priced and it can be gotten at adamsavage.com. I'm sorry to redound to filthy commerce in response to your question. But I really do. I love that bag for transporting tools. Larry Yu asks, oh, this is a very, very topical, practical question. Larry Yu says, I'm looking for advice on how to manage the labeling of individual containers in the Sortimo cases that I bought from you. Okay, let's pull one out. Let's see here. There we go. Okay, so. These were the orange Sortimo tea boxes that we shot for Savage Industries. This is my custom color, my favorite color orange. Um, and uh, what Larry Yu is asking is about labeling these internal, uh, these internal containers. I will tell you, Larry, that um, the best... I tend to label mine with a thin Sharpie, uh, actually a a Pico, there we go, a Pica pen. That's uh, this guy here. It's got a really thin tip and I can get in there and I can write. I don't think that's ideal. I do it because I'm unwilling to do more labor. <laughs> I would prefer a little bit of white sticker and then that, that I'd write on a white sticker and stick that there. And I did that for all my earliest Sortimos for nuts and bolts, cap heads, flat heads, button heads, etc. cetera. Um, interesting thing with that is that whenever there was oil in any of the things that I was storing, that oil would actually get on the label and make it fall off. I find the Sharpie tends to stay, but it's not pretty. And I, I, I wish it was prettier, but I clearly don't care enough to wish that it was prettier to execute it being prettier. That is one of those cost benefit analyses in real time. Um, yeah, so sorry, my, my process is to label it on the inside back wall so that when you open it, that's the thing that you can see. I hope that helps. Um, we're still not sure if we're gonna reinitiate more of these, but we're getting a lot of attention for them. It feels like that uh, that could happen. Charles M. says, with your upcoming trip to Arkansas, will this be the first time you are visiting our state? No, it is not. Um, he recommends visiting the Hot Spring Tower to get a 360 degree view of the area and get a ride in the duck boat ride. I'm a fan of duck boat tours. Duck boats are awesome. I've done the one in Boston. I've done the one in Chicago. Uh, I haven't done the San Francisco Bay duck boat tour. Um, yeah, dude, I'm a fan of I'm a fan of some of those things. Um, another one that's really amazing is the there's a couple of Chicago architecture boat tours that are so much fun. If you like architecture, and if you like architecture, it follows that you like Chicago because it is a major architectural town um, and the tours they have. Um, no, Arkansas is, uh, I have now been to all 50 states. My travels through Mythbusters and public speaking, I think before we started Mythbusters, I maybe had been to 15 states or something like that. But over the course of doing college appearances with Jamie for 15 years and touring stage shows around the country and around the world with Jamie and Michael Stevens. Um, my very last state was 2013, I believe, and it was, of all things, Louisiana. I know it seems weird for Louisiana to be my last state, but we opened a tour in uh, New Orleans, and that, was, uh, that crossed off all 50 states for me. Um, thank you for the recommendations, Charles M. I'm super looking forward. I have been a fan of Atlas Obscura since their very inception. And it was an early bonding between Michael Stevens and I that we discovered that whenever we arrive in a new city for any reason, one of the first sites we dial up is Atlas Obscura to find out the weirdest crap in that town. Um, so I'm delighted to be going to their festival. And I can see there's already some activity here. No, no, no cases, no, oh wait, here we go. Thank you for watching that video. Are you as sick of the tosses to membership as I am?
Good, because here's a brand new one that I recorded today and it's nice and short. There are three tiers to Tested Membership and they all offer awesome stuff. Find out about it by clicking the join link below. We'll see you there.